stories and all the breaking news as Iowa News continues. Stay right where you are. Vic and Sally and some of are seconds away. Live from WJZ 13, this is Baltimore's news station. Now, Eyewitness News. Election day is getting closer. Tonight, there's evidence the race for governor is getting tighter. Hello, everyone. I'm Vic Carter. And I'm Sally Thorner in for Denise Koch. Here's what people are talking about tonight. Lieutenant Governor Kathleen Kennedy Townsend's lead over Representative Robert Ehrlich in the race for governor apparently has shrunk. And they are now about even, according to a poll. This is no doubt means a, uh, an exciting final run in campaign 2002. Howard News is live in Annapolis, where news of the poll has people buzzing. Suzanne Collins is here to tell us what the numbers really mean. Suzanne? Well, Vic, this new Baltimore Sun poll showing Republican Ehrlich just five points behind Democrat Townsend is significant because there are twice as many Democrats in the state, and also some people remain undecided. GOP candidate Bob Ehrlich knew he had to convince Democrats to vote for him to win, and apparently he's making headway. Today's poll shows Townsend with 47% of the vote, Ehrlich with 44, and 10% remain undecided. I think that this is to be expected in any campaign, and I'm really excited about the opportunity to get our record out and his record out and see what our different vision is for the state of Maryland. The trend lines reflect uh, a congressman who has had crossover appeal in metropolitan Baltimore in an overwhelmingly Democratic district. It's clear from the numbers that Democrat Townsend has lost four votes in Baltimore City. In January, she had 72% of that vote and now just 58%. How did it happen? According to the poll, some loss may be due to Lieutenant Governor Townsend's ties to Governor Paris Glendening. His approval rating is the lowest ever. Pundits say an attack on Ehrlich is the next step for Townsend. You'll see um, how he's voted consistently with the NRA. You'll see how he's voted uh, against education funding. Uh, you'll be able to see that there's a real difference. These are bad guys with guns. I have advocated Project Exile, and a Get Tough on Felons with, with Guns approach for many, many years. Other interesting poll questions. Are people less likely to vote for Ehrlich because the NRA supports him? A third say yes. Does Townsend's Kennedy family connection make a difference? Most say no. Now, those polled said that Townsend was more likely to do a good job on the environment and education, whereas Bob Ehrlich would do a better job on the economy and on fighting crime. Back to you on TV Hill. Okay, thank you, Suzanne. I want his news live in Annapolis. The telephone survey of 1,200 likely voters conducted July 17th through the 19th has a margin or sampling error of plus or minus three percentage points. Remember to check in with Eyewitness News for team coverage campaign 2002. Count on us to update you on the latest issues. The latest from Wall Street right now. The Bulls have returned with a vengeance, Kai Peer, with more on the Dow's second best point game ever. Kai? Sally, keep your fingers crossed. After a week of dismal showings, the Dow soared today. It's up 489 points back above the 8,000 mark in its second biggest point game ever. Two major reasons for the third, the arrest of top Adelphia Communications executives and an agreement from Capitol Hill to crack down on corporate fraud she cheered investors today. Now, here are the final numbers. The Dow closed at 81.91, also a good day for the NASDAQ, up almost 61 points to close at 12.90. Here's a look at the roller coaster investors have been on since the last Thursday when the Dow finished just over 85.42. However, the good news could be short-lived. There is late word tonight that the Securities and Exchange Commission has opened an investigation into the accounting practices at AOL Time Warner, the world's largest media company. Sally? Fasten your seatbelts, Kai. Mm -hmm. Thanks. The SEC is looking into a series of transactions that boosted AOL's revenues. Our right, news has been checking daily on the condition of the police officer shot Saturday night while making a drug bust. Officer Christopher Hauser remains in serious but stable condition tonight at Shock Trauma. That's an improvement from earlier this week when he was in critical condition. Police have arrested two men in connection with that shooting. 18-year-old Neil Glover is charged with attempted murder. He is the alleged shooter. Police have also uh, have Glover's cousin in custody. Officer Hauser was shot while arresting 18-year-old Elliot Reed. That shooting is just one in a series of disturbing crimes in Baltimore City recently. The mayor says he's fed up with the daily reports of gun violence in Baltimore. And as Mike Shue reports, today he announced plans to do something about it. In rebuilding the city, former Mayor Schaefer had a three-word saying, do it now. 
now Mayor O'Malley has his own thing, and that is what is watched gets done. And what he wants watched are the city gun courts, the judges, and the prosecutors. These images are part of the shattered fabric of Baltimore. From the 12-year-old, one of five shots, to the 10-year-old. No, coming out of my mouth. That's when I said, Ma, I've been shot. It's all bringing down our city. Gather in, everybody. Upstanding leaders of Baltimore. Armed with statistics and anger, a demand for change. Do we want another young person in this city? Do we want to just feel like this is just the norm and just say this is acceptable? No, it is not acceptable. We can't expect the people of Baltimore to be courageous witnesses and jurors if our system can't put gun offenders behind bars for longer periods of time. He cites these statistics. Sentencing in the rest of the state courts fall below established guidelines 33% of the time. But in Baltimore, they fall below 72% of the time. The rest of the state courts give sentences within the guidelines 59% of the time, but in Baltimore, it's only 25%. Is the problem with police, the courts, or the judges? I don't know what the problem is. All I can do and what Court Watch will do is to shine a light on it so that the public can be informed and demand more of their institutions, which they pour so much money into. So the mayor wants regular citizens to sit in on the sentencing of gun crime, a court watch system. The city prosecutor would be affected by such a court watch system, but she was not invited to today's announcement. We are, we're doing a, a fantastic job with what we have to work with. It's oftentimes we act for more than we get. Patricia Jessamy says that the courts are open and she welcomes anyone in the courtroom. Meantime, the mayor's office is soliciting anyone who wants to join the court watch system. Reporting from downtown Mike Street, WJV Eyewitness News. Now back to you on TV Hill. Thanks, Mike. The mayor and city state's attorney, Patricia Jessamy, are planning to meet about the plan Friday. An Eyewitness News update now on the hit-and-run crash that killed a 26-year-old man on Monday night. It happened here on Liberty Road in Baltimore County. A speeding BMW runs right over a man on a motor scooter. Police say this is the man that they are looking for. He is the driver of the BMW, 26-year-old Gordon Everett Booth of Randallstown. Officers report they clocked Booth going as fast as 70 miles an hour right before the crash. The BMW then broadsided a scooter, killing 26-year-old Walter Robinson. Police are asking anyone who knows where Gordon Booth is to call them. The phone number 410-307-2020. Tonight, police arrest a Randallstown man in connection with a double murder in a small town in New York State. In an explosive investigation, Eyewitness News first reported last night at 6, the victims were scheduled to testify against the suspect in a trial here in Baltimore County. Krista Delcamp with more. I don't want the full story. I only found her mother and her sister dead in the house. But police say the man you see here not only knew the full story about the murders of his wife, sister, and mother, shot to death in their home in Binghamton, New York this weekend, they believe he played a role. And this morning charged him with second-degree murder in the death of his own sister-in-law, 14-year-old Devin Spears. Baltimore County Police Department members of a uh, surveillance team task force arrested a Vernon E. Parker, Jr., based on our arrest warrant. Binghamton police will only say the motive is domestic. As Eyewitness News first reported Tuesday, the murder victims were expected to testify against Parker in a child sexual abuse case here in Baltimore County Circuit Court July 30th. The alleged victim, the same sister-in-law that Parker is now accused of killing. And with the alleged sexual abuse victim, Devin, and her mother, a key witness, both murdered, the prosecutor handling the case says she has no choice but to formally drop the charges in court next Tuesday. When they called me and said that they were, that Devin and her mother had been murdered the night before, I mean, I said, where was he? Where was, you know, where was Vernon? It's hard to believe that someone will go to such an extreme um, to protect themselves. I love my wife and my kids. I'm sorry what happened to her mom and her sister, but I didn't do it. I had no reason to do it. Outside his Randallstown home Monday, following police questioning, Parker said he's no child abuser or murderer. Our numbers don't like me in with rumors spreading things like that. They just kind of came back here. I want my family back. I want my life back. I want, I want to be quite innocent. And that is not likely to happen soon. Parker is being held as a fugitive from justice and faces extradition to New York. By the way, several police agencies from New York to Maryland are helping in the investigation, Sally. Excellent reporting. Thanks, Krista. Binghamton police say there may be more arrests. Two men were seen fleeing from the murder scene shortly after the crime.
Police here in Maryland fear foul play in the disappearance of a woman from Halethorpe, Baltimore County. They don't have any new leads on what happened to 24-year-old Michelle Russ. Russ was last seen Saturday morning. Her minivan was found abandoned in Lansdowne that night. Friends and family are holding a prayer service tonight for Michelle Russ at the Halethorpe Community Church on Francis Avenue. People throughout the Baltimore area have been inconvenienced recently by a rash of water main breaks. Eyewitness News is live at the Lake Montebello pumping station. Sharon Lee has more on why there are so many problems this summer and how frustrating it is to keep up with them. Sharon? Sally, DPW says they've had 170 water main breaks this year in June and July alone. That's double the number they had this time last year. And they're working with a new theory right now. They're saying the drought may be to blame. This geyser on Military Avenue in Pikesville started as a small water line break on Monday. We've been in the drought and we haven't been able to use any water, yet they're letting this water go for over 48 hours. I don't think it's right. DPW says they fixed the line on Monday, but then three valves burst. They let the water running until they could fix it. Without water, people could, uh, could suffer, especially the elderly. So uh, our first concern is to make sure that people have water during this uh, time of uh, the heat. Today, they're fixing it. It's a cooler day, so the water shut off. But why is the number of water line breaks doubled from a similar period last year? It could be, you know, a defect in the pipe. Uh, pumping could be a, a cause for it. Even the heat. But what's different from last year is the severe drought, which is causing DPW to move water differently. Normally, the water to the west side of the city comes from Liberty Reservoir, which is actually filtered here at Ashford. But now, with the drought, water, 140 million gallons worth per day, is coming from the Susquehanna River, coming down 38 miles of pipes down to Montebello Filtration Plant. From there, it's being pumped to the west side, increasing the pressure on the pipes. Add to that a 72-inch main that broke under Key Bridge back in April. Now, the city has to pump the water around this way to Anne Arundel County, which adds more pressure to the pipes. We're, we're still concerned about loss of water, but we think it's more important to have people with water than without water at this point in time. CPW says their first priority is to fix the water mains that cause people to go without water. As for that big water main break under the Key Bridge, they should have that fixed this fall. Back to you. Oh, thanks, Sharon. Mm -hmm. You see a water main break and you live in the city, please call 311. And if you live in the county, you can call 410-396-5352. But you really need to report these breaks. There is more evidence tonight. What's becoming a perennial summer health problem is back in Maryland. The state confirms it's found mosquitoes carrying the West Nile virus here in Savage, Howard County. This is the first time contaminated mosquitoes have turned up in Maryland this summer. They were picked up as part of a routine sampling of mosquitoes throughout the state. So far, no humans have come down with the disease. Health experts say the best way to keep West Nile at bay is to make sure there's no standing water around your house. We had a little water in the form of rain last night, not enough to help much. Still looks cloudy outside right now, but that's not stopping diehard baseball fans. As far as the drought, it would be nice if those clouds dumped a few inches of rain on us. Well, they're leaving the ballpark because the game's over, right? Any chance of that tonight? Bob is live with an updated look at first morning radar. Bob? Well, a few places are getting some okay rain right now. It developed very quickly in the last 15, 20 minutes. Take a quick look at radar. The heaviest activity now over Howard County. As you can see, we've got sort of like a, an area of rain that's developed out to our west of the city right now. This little batch right here. Upstream up in northern Baltimore County. But we'll go down to Howard County. That's where the heaviest activity is. From Highland up to Clarksville and up toward Columbia. Some one, two, three separate cells, perhaps with some thunder in them, or some decent shower activity right now. It's been there for a little while, so at least some areas are getting some rain activity from the city on the west. Looks like we'll see some more showers around the region. Take a look at temperatures. They've dropped some really pleasant levels. We're at 75 at BWI, dew point 70, humidity 84%. Winds east 14, keeping it nice and pleasant. Barometer 3012, and it's rising. So keep your fingers crossed. We might see some showers the next hour or two across the Baltimore region. Vic. Okay, follow my yard. Thank you very much, Bob. Biologists think they have the perfect poison to kill the snakehead fish. Test results are being completed tonight in Oxford and Talbot County. And as Alex Dimitri reports, the poison should be lethal enough to kill every snakehead in a Crofton pond. Scientists at this laboratory in Oxford on the eastern shore normally look for ways to keep marine life alive. But in a quarantine lab, they are searching for the best way to kill young northern snakehead fish. 
an organic poison called rotenone will likely be the lethal weapon. It's often used to control fish, uh, kill fish in, 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 uh, in, where they're unwanted in ponds and things of this sort. There may be hundreds to thousands of young snakeheads in this Crofton pond. Spawn of a pair of snakeheads released here two years ago. A fish that can breathe air, move on land, and eat native fish. You're just dealing with a, a fish that can uh, spread. You're dealing with a fish that likes to eat other fish. To kill the snakeheads, herbicide will first be used to kill off underwater vegetation. That will clear the way for boats to then spread the rotenone and saturate the pond. The poison will suffocate the fish in much the same way oxygen depletion causes massive fish kills. Once all the fish float, state biologists will sort out the dead. Uh, one of the big issues that we'll be dealing with is not only is monitoring uh, what comes up, but also uh, carting it away. Even though the snakehead is capable of coming to the surface to breathe air, right now research shows the poison is more powerful than the fish's power to adapt. Because of the air breathing uh, capability resists the effects, and, and as I said, re preliminary results suggest that, they, that it is, is quite lethal. And within the next two weeks, the poison may be given a chance to work in this pond. Alex Dimitrik, WJZ Eyewitness News. The poison study research, along with scientific recommendations to use it, will be sent Friday to the Department of Natural Resources for final approval. This has been the summer story. The snakehead, and, and if you talk to people from out of Maryland, they all know about the Absolutely, snakehead. it's across the country. The talker. Still to come tonight on WJZ's Eyewitness News, new details about the murder of a couple in Ocean City. Now hear what the suspects were accused of doing. We want to see how tough they really are to do something like this to a seven-year-old girl. Hear how this Philadelphia second grader outsmarted her kidnappers. You'll want to stick around and hear the story. But first, a vote today on a plan to charge high school athletes in one Maryland county. The results next. You're watching Eyewitness News with Denise Cope, Vic Carter, Bob Turk with First Warning Weather, and Mark Viviano Sports. The Eyewitness News team on WJZ 13, Baltimore's news station. On the next Entertainment Tonight, Dr. Phil. You know what? Shut up! His Get Real seminars are a hit. Now the latest news on his new TV talk show. Oprah has been an amazing coach. Then, Julia Roberts' Big Night Out with Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston. Plus, CSI, the secrets of the new season from one of the stars. I can tell you one thing, I know it's going to be scary. And an Austin Powers exclusive, Dr. Evil's rap song. Evil's all that I see. You ask me my name? Next, E.T. Tonight at 7.30 on WJZ 13. Breaking news from federal court tonight in the case of an artist suing the Baltimore Ravens over the use of a drawing that became the team's logo. Less than an hour ago, a jury decides that Frederick Boucher will not receive any money for the shield with wings drawing used by the Ravens for their first three years. The Ravens and NFL properties argue that the logo is worthless. Boucher sued the Ravens for a percentage of $2.2 million in merchandise sales and $400,000 in souvenir soft drink sales. High school students may soon have to pay in order to play sports. The Carroll County School Board just approved a $60 fee for students participating in high school sports. Dan Saunders has reaction from students and school officials. Westminster High School baseball player Blake Stewart is getting in tip-top shape for next season. Stewart's also warming up to the fact that it will cost him and any other Carroll County High School athlete $60 to participate in any one sport next year. I think it's probably a good idea because, you know, there's a lot of, like, the fields need work and stuff, so the money will probably help that and new equipment and stuff. Today, the Carroll County School Board reluctantly... It's something that uh, we did not want to do. ...but unanimously approved the sports participation fee. It's something that we felt uh, was the lesser of the evils. I think you have to pay 60 for each sport you play, so maybe that's, that's a little more if you're... Like a triathlete. It's expected to generate at least $200,000 in order to cover sports-related expenses. A lot of schools need money, and this is just not a way to do it. Before today's vote was taken... We're not going to make this decision here lightly. I don't know why we can't charge all students a couple of dollars as an activity fee to offset the cost of all extracurricular activities. And that would mean all students in school have the opportunity to participate in band, chorus, drama, sports, everything. I think the fees is a good deal. The new policy allows a waiver of that $60 fee for athletes who participate in the free or reduced lunch program or have other financial hardships. We felt that we could generate some additional dollars because it does cost us money.
and their work is yet to be done because the Carroll County School Board must now decide whether cheerleaders literally pay the price as sports participants. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Stan. In Maryland, only Frederick and Washington counties have similar fees. Other headlines this Wednesday, July 24th already. Columbia Howard County residents have a rude awakening this morning after somebody slashes the tires on 25 cars overnight. Political newcomer Oz Banger challenges Baltimore County Exec Doug Ruppersberger to debate before the September primary. Ruppersberger says he'll debate only if the three other candidates are included. In Annapolis, Anne Arundel County, Governor Glenn Denning appoints eight people to Maryland Security Council. The group will work with other state governments to develop emergency plans. California firefighters have huge emergencies on their hands right now, protecting a national treasure from a raging wildfire. The McNally wildfire has charred thousands of acres and much of the Sequoia National Forest. Now it's headed for the giant Sequoia National Monument. Mm. Fire investigators say an illegal campfire sparked the blaze. Let's hope it doesn't it's make horrible. it there. Really? It's, it's terrible. I mean, these fires are just horrible. And the carelessness of people is just inexcusable. Mind boggling. <laughs> Around the region, we have some showers that have developed in the region, uh, west of the city, from the city on the west, uh, to our north, and across a portion of Howard County. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Heading out tomorrow, your tides, first of the day, center line 601, sets at, there you see, <laughs> sets at 825. Thank you. Now we'll take a look outside. Cloudy skies and some light showers developing around the region. A few areas getting some more moderate type rain. Nothing yet downtown, but we'll probably see some rain in the next 45 minutes or so. Come back, we'll look at the forecast. And first one on the radar right after this. I go to the moon like two, three times a day. I collected everything Mozart's ever done in 10 minutes. With my connection, I never wait to get into the White House. Do more than you've ever imagined with Comcast High-Speed Internet. Get up to three months for as little as $19.95 a month, plus a free self-install kit. It's up to twice as fast as DSL, leaves dial-up in the dust, and it's always on, always connected. Ever been in the belly of a whale? I have. Get three months for as little as $19.95 a month and a free self-install kit. Call now. First warning weather. Prepared by a team of forecasters who really understand Baltimore weather and how it will affect you. Uh, a lot of clouds, guys, and some rain falling from some of those clouds uh, west of the city right now. We'll take a look at radar. Looks like we may see some rain around the region in the next hour or two, and that's good news. We hope to get some. Kind of take a look out to the west and southwest of the city and also to the north and northwest. You'll see some activity down there. We've got a shower northwest of the city around the uh, Falls Road area, Mount Carmel West, toward Hampstead, right downtown over Hanover Pike, north of Upper Coast. A light shower on Macross in that region up toward White House in northwest Baltimore County. That's just southwest of the Pretty Boy Dam area. Not too heavy. Actually, 15 minutes ago, it was a little heavier, but now it's kind of weakened somewhat. But it may move down to the south and southeast, closer toward Butler, down Falls Road the next little bit. The heaviest activity is by far in Howard County. Some pretty moderate showers, particularly west of the of Clarksville area, north of Clarksville, Shepherd Lane, west of Elliott Oak Manor Lane, and in Highland, Tyndale School Road, south of Simpsonville. Pretty heavy showers down there. Even some thunder reported just along Columbia Pike through Columbia, all through Route 29. Light rain, some areas a little more moderate rain. So. At least some folks are getting some rain around the region. That's the good news right now. Take a look at rainfall for BWI today. Only five one hundredths officially. Year to date, we're still almost six inches below normal, as you can see. So we've got a lot of rain to make up across the region. We may make up a little bit the next few days. Seventies, that's about all we have. Eighty-two today, sixty-nine below, eighty-eight, sixty-six normal on the date. Ninety-seven, fifty-five, the records in the state. Moisture continues, a lot of it. Heat and humidity down there. Hopefully some of that moisture will head back to our region. We have a do, do have a chance of getting some more show activity later tomorrow as this front kind of sags close to the area. Most of the rain will be to our south, but watching a warm front forming out to our west might bring us some additional rain in here, maybe Friday, along with warmer temperatures. Tomorrow only in the 70s, some light scattered showers possible late in the day. Clouds, chance for shower mainly south, a low of 66. It looks like most of the rain now is just west and southwest of the city. Except for that one shower up near Hampstead. And then tomorrow, clouds cool with a few showers around later in the day. 78. Tomorrow's high. Five-day forecast coming up for you. Okay. okay. Thank you.
Still to come tonight on WJC's Eyewitness News, just how clean is the water we swim in at Maryland's beaches? Results of a new study will surprise you. Find out how viewers help police solve this Baltimore County robbery caught on tape. But first, a disagreement between Dante Stokes and his lawyer winds up in front of a Baltimore judge. An update on his high-profile case coming up. And... This is Mark Viviano. The Orioles are in action this afternoon, and it's never too early for football. Call it summer school for the Terps. Get ready for the college football season. We'll take a look when Eyewitness News continues. Notice. Factory authorized inventory reduction sale. Only at the... You'll need no down payment, plus pay no finance charge to 775. No one sells Sundays for less. It's worth your drive to Nationwide. You're watching Eyewitness News for Hempstead, Westminster, and all of Carroll County. This is WJZ 13, Baltimore's news station. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for staying with Eyewitness News. Here are some of the stories that people are talking about tonight. The stock market rebounds today, up nearly 500 points, in part due to a crackdown on corporate fraud. Tonight, the founder of a bankrupt cable giant and his two sons are in trouble with the law after they were arrested for allegedly stealing hundreds of millions of dollars. 78-year-old former Adelphia Chief Executive John Regas and his sons, Timothy and Michael, were taken into custody in New York earlier today. Two other former executives were also arrested in Pennsylvania. Prosecutors say the Regas family built Adelphia for more than $60 billion. If convicted, each could get up to 30 years in jail. Two suspects in a convenience store robbery could be facing possible jail time. The men, Eyewitness News showed you in the surveillance video yesterday, are now in custody. He was arrested 22-year-old Robert Eason and 20-year-old Joshua Sherwood earlier today. The robbery happened on July 13th at the Highs in Dundalk. You can see the two men, one of them holding a knife, robbing the Highs store on North Point Road. The clerk was not physically hurt during that robbery. There's new information tonight in the case of a Baltimore man charged with shooting a priest he says molested him as a child. As Pat Warren reports, Dante Stokes' attorney asks to be removed from the case, but a judge says no. Attorney Warren Brown creates a public platform for his client, Dante Stokes. It's an epidemic more so than just me. The other people who are out here who have been victimized, who have been abused by predatory people. But in telephone conversations today, family members tell Eyewitness News they're upset with Brown because he has not arranged for Dante to get much needed counseling. They've got their ideas about who they want. I've got my ideas about who we should see and who we should use in court. Aware of the family's displeasure in this and other aspects of the case, Brown asked the court to remove him. We can't fault him too much because it's good. They don't know about the criminal justice system, which means they're good people. They haven't been involved in it. But the downside of that is that they, they, um, their lack of information causes them to make decisions that aren't very good. Part of the problem, according to Brown, is the emotional nature of the case and trying to show support and make sure Dante gets the best defense possible. There's been conflict and second guessing. But as even some family members have come to agree, cases are not tried by committee. The tail is not going to wag the dog here. If I'm going to be his attorney, I'm going to run the show. Which Brown continues to insist is heavy-handed treatment from the state. We understand that they have to prosecute Dante. We understand that. But when the prosecutor comes in and says, we want 25 years, 20 years, first five without parole for, for Dante Stokes, considering what we all know has happened to him, it's absurd and outrageous. And that injustice is what drives me to spend hundreds of hours on this case. The judge denied Brown's request to be removed from the case, but Stokes still has the option of firing him, and the family is interested in hearing from other lawyers because they can't understand why Brown hasn't had a doctor to see him yet, Sally. Pat, thank you. Dante Stokes remains confined on home detention. And our witnesses update right now on the Pennsylvania couple charged with murdering another couple in Ocean City. Benjamin and Erica Sifrit are accused of killing Virginia couple Joshua Ford and Martha Crutchley over Memorial Day weekend. Tonight, Ocean City police say an employee of Secrets Nightclub has come forward, saying that the Sifrits threatened his life. The man claims that he saw Benjamin Sifrit trying to break into an ATM on May the 29th. When the employee approached him, Benjamin's wife, Erica, allegedly pulled a handgun out of her purse and said that she would kill him. It was an emotional but very happy ending for a Philadelphia family after a seven-year-old girl escapes her abductors and is returned home. But tonight, police are still on the lookout for the two men they believe kidnapped her. 
In less than 24 hours, little Erica Pratt's family shed their tears of terror for tears of joy. Thrilled the seven-year-old is back in her Philadelphia home. I don't know the words to describe it. It was a very empty and lonely feeling to have one of ours taken from the nest. But we have her back. Hailed by police as a brave little girl, Erica came home last night. Her harrowing story is one of perseverance and fortitude. Witnesses say she was nabbed Monday night by two men as she played with her sister in front of her grandmother's row house. She was dragged into a car bound by duct tape around her arms, legs, and eyes and left in the basement of a building 10 miles away. Somehow, Erica says she chewed through the tape, broke down the basement door, smashed a window, and called to some children playing nearby. I heard it was going, help, help, somebody help, and she was crying. The children pulled Erica from the window and alerted police who took her to the hospital. Her spirits were amazing. Uh, she did not seem like any human being, regardless of her age, that went through that type of a trauma or that kind of an ordeal. Police say while Erica was missing, the kidnappers called her grandmother, threatening to kill the girl unless they received a $150,000 ransom. The search is now on for James Burns and Edward Johnson. Authorities say the men know the family, but her uncle won't discuss it. One of our children was taken from us, and thank God we have her back. And that's all we're concerned with. In a time when child abductions and murders are making headlines across the country, Erica's family knows just how lucky they are to have her home tonight. Mm, certainly so. Thousands of family members and friends and complete strangers are expected to gather at tonight's funeral for five-year-old Samantha Runyon. Samantha was kidnapped nine days ago while playing with a friend near her home in Stanton, California. Her body was found a day later. Officials say she'd been sexually assaulted. Alejandro Avila is charged with kidnapping, molesting, and murdering Samantha. The district attorney says he'll decide in the next two weeks whether to seek the death penalty in this case. Well, scientists may be one step closer to creating additional ways to treat anthrax exposure. Italian researchers have developed a system that can rapidly screen drugs that are capable of disarming the deadly virus. The scientists already say they have found two chemical compounds that inhibit a protein within anthrax that attacks the immune system. One professor cautions that it's too early to determine whether they've made a real breakthrough. The next time you take a medication, check the insert for a warning about photosensitivity. Could be a real problem. Eyewitness News Health Watch reporter Kelly Lynn says this is especially important during the summer months. Kelly? It is, Sally. Photosensitivity occurs when the skin has an abnormally heightened response to the sun. It's caused by a variety of commonly used medications, all kinds of drugs, including antibiotics, antidepressants, antihistamines, anti-inflammatory drugs, and even wrinkle creams can make your skin extremely sensitive to the sun. So read the information that comes with your medicine so that you'll know for sure whether or not it causes photosensitivity. Symptoms of photosensitivity include red, swollen skin and blisters, Sally. Thanks, Kelly. If you take a medicine that causes photosensitivity, limit sun exposure to an hour or less, apply sunscreen with an SPF of at least 30, and apply it liberally. And still to come on WJC's Eyewitness News, just as mysteriously as they arrive, some street signs in Hamden disappear. The good news for some city residents coming up. A sailing champion's newest America's Cup yacht sinks with a full crew on board. Don't miss these amazing pictures. And about took your first one with us and how long will the cooler temperatures last? And finish up the exclusive first morning five-day forecast. I will listen to you right back. It's more than just a weather map. It's how you interpret it. What it all comes down to is how will the weather affect you? It's more than just the weather. It's first warning weather. WJZ 13, Baltimore's news station. WJZ thanks Chevrolet for sponsoring Eyewitness News. Now Eyewitness Newsreel has more of the stories people are talking about. At this hour, the House of Representatives is deciding whether or not to kick out Ohio Congressman James Traffican. Traffican was Disregard. convicted of racketeering, bribery, and tax evasion in April and could face seven years in prison. If he's ousted, he will be the second lawmaker since the Civil War to be forcibly expelled from Congress. The Traffican says he's not going quietly. If he's expelled, he plans to run again from prison. Reverend Al Sharpton is suing HBO after a 19-year-old videotape airs on the cable channel. It shows Sharpton was a government agent posing as a drug dealer discussing a cocaine shipment. The tape aired as part of a segment about mobster Michael Francese. Sharpton says the tape defames his character and he's asking for a billion dollars in damages. A rescue crew in Long Beach, California is working to raise Dennis Conner's $5 million yacht. A rudder broke Tuesday, causing the yacht to sink. 
The salvage crew used a crane and airbags to lift the ship out of the water. Connor is one of America's best-known sailors. He has won the America's Cup four times. Ooh, that's and I hope hurt. he has deep pockets. It's like the good ship Oriole right now, taking on a little water. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> you know, and Toronto, too, is the team. And who figured this one? Yeah, the Blue Jays are one of the hottest teams in baseball, and they continue to burn Baltimore. Toronto's won 10 of its last 12. Four of those wins have been against the O's, including the game this afternoon. We pick it up in the eighth inning. Game tied at two. Buddy Groom in relief of Travis Driscoll. Two on for Carlos Delgado past the drawn-in infield. Chris Woodward scores for the Jays, so they take a 3-2 lead. Later that inning, Willis Roberts in relief, and Vernon Wells comes through with a single here. That made it 4-2. 5-2 is the final. The O's couldn't get the big hits, but the Blue Jays did. Baltimore's dropped three in a row. I don't know. It's one of those things where, uh, you know, every team um, at some point of the season seems to have, you know, another team's number. And, uh, you know, right now it seems like they've got our number. So um, we just have to, to keep on plugging, and uh, we'll see them in a couple weeks. Now the O's embark on a 10-game road trip. It starts Friday in Boston. The next home game is until August 6th. This afternoon in the National League, there's the Tigger watching the Braves and the Marlins in South Florida, Atlanta, with one of the best records in baseball, the best, actually. That's Chipper Jones, and he's going to show you some of the defense. Chipper Owens. coming out of nowhere on this fly ball to left field. That's a pretty catch. Braves starter Damian Moss allowed just one hit. 10-zip Braves. They fry the fish. Atlanta hasn't lost a series since mid-May. Now, here's an interesting note. With the players talking about going on strike, Mets union rep Al Leiter received a contract extension today. Two years, $18 million. Now, maybe a guaranteed $9 million yearly salary can help Leiter convince his union brethren that they've got it pretty good. And going on strike might appear ridiculous. Well, the Ravens open training camp Friday. The Maryland Terrapins start three weeks from today when the freshmen report to College Park. But some of the upperclassmen have been working hard all summer. Terps quarterbacks and receivers have been going through non-contact drills in the summer heat. Maryland lost 19 seniors from last year's Orange Bowl team, so the players see the need for extra preparation. Basically, we just want to get as much thrown and catching as, as possible and just run our routes precisely and get the quarterbacks ready because that's what we need to do this year is we need Scotty and uh, Orlando or Chris to uh, step up and take Sean's place. So these workouts are the best way to get them, you know, to come out and be ready for our summer practice. Terps linebacker E.J. Henderson's been working out, recovering from back surgery. The season starts August 31st against Notre Dame. Finally, the latest Bozo Bulletin from the bizarre life of golfer John Daly. Big John's most recent stunt, he used super glue to close a cut on his hand. Daly had emergency surgery to remove a piece of glass from his right hand after the first round of the British Open. Defying doctor's orders, he played the second round, and in order to do that, he put super glue on the wound. Saying he basically played one-handed after he did that, Daly said it was one of the best rounds he's ever played. He's He's the one who travels around in that huge trailer. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that at home, kids. <laughs> yeah, really. Thanks, Mark. Stick around for the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather's got the very latest updates on today's big stories in about 15 minutes. Be sure to watch tonight's 48 Hours Bitter Pill. It's the story of a Washington State woman who is currently serving a 90-year prison sentence for the deaths of two people who died from cyanide-laced excedrin. But did she do it? Find out tonight at 10 p.m. right here on WJC 13. Up next on Eyewitness News at 6, is the water at the beach your kids swim in dangerous to their health? Here are the results of a recent study that may surprise you. You pay for it and hope you never have to use it. Find out if you're paying more than most for your car insurance. But first, take a look again at tonight's closing numbers from Wall Street. Not too shabby. We'll be right back. First warning weather. Prepared by a team of forecasters who really understand Baltimore weather and how it will affect you. And radar showing some light rain around the region right now. A little heavier shot up by Hampstead and Carroll County. And the heaviest activity south of Columbia, extreme southern Howard County, right along the Montgomery County line. In fact, into northern Montgomery County. That looks like pretty heavy showers down there. Right under there. Right under there. Thank you. Right under there. Heavy shower there, just west of uh, Route 29 in Montgomery County. And it seems to be heading actually down toward the D.C. region. So in Baltimore, some light sprinkles, light showers, a little the heaviest activity, a little, little shower there near Hampstead in Carroll County. 
Let's take a look first at tomorrow's forecast. Brooks Tomlin's out in the WJZ outback. Made a couple of sprinkles out there, Brooks. So look at tomorrow's forecast. Hey, good evening, Bob and everybody. Uh, we do have a few light, light sprinkles falling around uh, downtown Baltimore and TV Hill, but, you know, it's a cloudy, it's a gray, it's a sticky evening. I think Edgar Allan Poe would be proud. 66 degrees with clouds tomorrow morning when you head out and about, and you want to keep your umbrella with you again tomorrow as we head through the midday hours, 75 degrees then, and more than likely we'll see some more scattered light showers tomorrow afternoon, 68 degrees tomorrow evening. Now, I know everybody wants to know, what about the weekend upcoming? Bob has that in the First Morning Weather Center. Bob? Well, it looks like summer's going to be coming back this weekend, that's for sure. Take a look at these temperatures. Next couple of days, though, 78. Chance of showers late in the day. 78 also on Friday, but a better chance of showers than maybe a thunderstorm on Friday. That's our best chance, I think. Another chance of an afternoon thunder shower on Saturday, back up to 88, and shh, right back into the soup. Sunday and Monday, humid, low to perhaps a mid-90. Chances of rain, not that good. So we just call it mainly sunny skies. Nights get warmer as well, as you can see. Okay? Have a good uh, Thursday. Thank, thank you, Bob. With the summer season comes vacations to the beach. But how do beaches across the country, including right here in Maryland, rate for health and safety? Today, the National Resources Defense Council's annual beach report is released here at Sandy Point State Park in Anne Arundel County. Mary Purr gives Sandy Point a good rating for clean beaches and clean water because it's one of Maryland's beaches that is tested once a week for bacteria. The NRDC's 2002 report gives the nation's beaches a rating on whether they are following the EPA's recommendations. The water is better, more clear, but it, the coastal beaches are still uh, in fair to poor condition. Mary Perch says the good thing about a beach being monitored and closed is that to get it reopened, it's going to have to be cleaned up. To get a copy of testing the waters or to find out which of the nation's beaches are beach buddies or beach bums, or go to the Natural Resources Defense Council website at nrdc.org. A day at a Florida beach turned deadly for an elderly New York man. The 76-year-old man and his wife were swimming together at this beach near Miami when crashing waves overpowered the couple. Rescue workers pulled them to shore. The couple was taken to a local hospital where the man died a short time later. The woman's listed in stable condition tonight. And two people are killed when a delivery truck loses control and crashes into a California laundromat. It happened yesterday afternoon in Crow's Landing. Two girls, ages 12 and 16, died on the scene. Three others were injured. The driver of the truck was also injured. The cause of the crash still under investigation. In tonight's Island Disease Consumer Watch, Maryland has one of the highest insurance rates in the country. According to the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, Marylanders pay the 12th highest rate in the U.S. Washington, D.C. came in first, followed by New Jersey. Some factors that influence the ranking, auto theft rates and geography. You can park your car along Falls Road in Hamden in late afternoon once again and not get towed. Those no parking signs that went up just over a month ago have been taken down. Mayor Martin O'Malley ordered the signs removed after getting complaints from merchants who said it was hurting their businesses. The signs were removed last night. Well, my husband kept threatening to move to the county, and maybe that may have been what would have happened. Um, Mayor O'Malley did not want that to happen. We love you now, Mayor O'Malley. They're gone, and I can resume business as usual. Neighbors and businesses complained the signs were put up June the 14th without warning. The dispute started when a neighbor complained that traffic on a section of Falls Road posed a danger to residents. A 550-acre estate is drawing actor John Travolta and others who want to be able to park their large airplanes outside their front door. Travolta's new $2.5 million getaway in central Florida's Marion County will be constructed in Jumbo Lair, an aviation community of 125 homes. Each will have its own taxiway with room for large jets. I was just talking to a friend of mine this weekend about neighborhoods like this. I never even heard of that. Oh, it's incredible. Really? It's a, it's Is there a any around thing. here? I don't think so. Yeah. But there may be wow. some. <laughs> piece of Eastern Shore history is repeated today. We'll take you to Chincoteague next. Finally tonight, a tradition continues on the Maryland-Virginia shore. Stop what you're doing, call the children, and take a look at the annual pony swim. No one ever gets tired of seeing the sight, the wild ponies of Assateague swimming the narrow channel to Chincoteague Island. Thousands travel to see the swim every year, and some of those pony lovers even go home with one of the swimmers. The Chincoteague Volunteer Fire Department auctions the younger ponies off to loving families. The rest swim back to Assateague on Friday. 
The swim and auction keep the wild pony population under control and healthy. I remember reading Misty of Tinker Peak when I was in elementary school. And it's always on the hottest of days. It was great down there. Yeah. It was only about 78 degrees. Just a lot of cloudy skies. It was pretty pleasant, wasn't it? But that's it for tonight, everybody. Watch Eyewitness News at 11 after 48 hours. I'm Sally for Denise. And for Bob and Mark, I'm Vic Carter. Thanks for watching Eyewitness News on WJC 13, Baltimore's news station. American Skyline Insurance Company proudly sponsors closed captioning of Eyewitness News.